Hi, so as Scott said, this is On My Nightstand, and I am Laura Cathcart Robbins. And today I'm actually going to be reading a piece, um, an essay of my own. It's in a book called The Moment, and I'll tell you a little bit about this book and why I chose to read this now. Uh, Ten years ago, this book was published, and it's a, it's a memoir series. The Moment is this I'm reading from the book now wild, poignant, life-changing stories from 125 writers and artists, famous and obscure. I fell into the obscure category. (laughs) Um, It was edited by Larry Smith, who was amazing to give me a chance to publish me in this book. Um, Stephanie Wilder-Taylor, who has been a guest on the show, and she's been a longtime collaborator and writing teacher of mine, she recommended me when he was looking for um, short essays. Uh, She recommended me, and so I wrote this specifically for him, for this book. And like I said, it was published 10 years ago in 2012. And now I'm um, I'm being published again. I have a memoir called Stash coming out on Atria, Simon & Schuster in March of 2023. I could not be more excited. Um, So this 10-year journey has led me um, from from this story to the story that hopefully you'll all read next year, um, but see plenty of posts about between now and then. Okay, so this story is called True Calm by me, Laura Cathcart Robbins. When my two sons and I arrived at the party, it was in full swing chaos. The ball pit was closed because someone had sullied it, but kids were piling in anyway. A woman holding an infant had been pushed into the cake table. She and the infant were fine, the cake not so much. Children rifled through the goodie bags that were supposed to be parting gifts. The balloon artist kept scaring the children by accidentally popping his balloon animals. I took in the entire scene with a mixture of pity and smugness. I would have never let things get so out of control. I saw the hostess trying to piece the cake back together, so happy birthday Louie was legible. Just then, her husband entered the party. He had arrived from London and come straight from the airport. His face was stern as he sought her out with his eyes, semi-graciously accepting greetings or handshakes as he combed the room for her. I braced myself for the blow-up. Surely he would lay into her now. What husband wouldn't? She saw him and rose to her feet, her hands covered in blue icing, her eyes pleading, his still stern and resolute. At that moment, my smugness disappeared and I felt not pity, but compassion for her. I knew how it felt to fail your husband and have him blame you for it. I knew it all too well. I wanted to rush between them and delay the inevitable, his harsh words, her tears. I couldn't comprehend what happened next. She closed her eyes and leaned into him, resting her head on his shoulder. He held her tenderly, eyes closed as well, and rocked her gently back and forth. The chaos around them disappeared. He was not her tormentor, but her comforter. Tears sprang easily to my eyes. I was mesmerized by the power of the love I saw in front of me. He loved her enough to be her place of solace in the midst of chaos. She trusted him enough to let him. Until that moment, I didn't believe that kind of love was possible.